Hi, everybody. My name is Kate. Um, I keep looking at the laptop screen, but I forget there's a camera over there. So I'm going to look at the camera right now. Um, so uh, I'm Kate. I'm with Glazer's Camera. Um, many of you probably have taken workshops with us or gone on photo walks. So hopefully um, you recognize my face maybe and um, maybe my name. But I'm going to be here today to kind of help facilitate everything. Um, and we're gonna do a whole bunch of these over the next month and probably into May. So stay tuned to our workshops and event page for more of these as we continue to publish them. Um, one note real quick is we are planning on recording these. The goal there is to make them available online so that people could watch it later. Um, Dan, I didn't get your permission for that. So I hope you're okay with that. If you're not, <laughs> then we won't do that. Um, but, uh, We've been talking about it and we made the decision we're gonna go ahead and try and record these as much as we can. And um, then we can make them available on YouTube or something like that, which I think is great for the community to be able to see this uh, time and again. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to ask them. You can unmute your mic if you wanna ask them with your voice um, or you can ask them in the chat room. Those are your options there. Um, so, from here forward, I'm going to introduce Mr. Dan Bailey. Um, Dan is a Fujifilm ex-photographer, and he has done some workshops with us in the past here in Seattle. And uh, Dan's a really awesome guy. He's also a pilot, and he's been baking a lot of bread lately. Or maybe his spouse or partner has been. I don't know. I keep seeing yeah, bread yeah. photos. So, yeah, I've been um, baking bread. Baking the bread. So uh, Dan's going to talk a little bit about getting creative when we're kind of stuck indoors. And, um, from here, I'm gonna let Dan take it from here. Yeah, so I just wanted to say uh, thanks to Kate and Victor for throwing this together so quickly. Uh, I, I think it's a great idea for, for us all to stay engaged. Uh, obviously, we're uh, having a really weird time right now. Uh, and I, from my experience, we're all kind of embracing the weirdness uh, and being good citizens um, and being good to each other. You know, it's just, it's weird to be walking on the trails and have to veer around people. But we all kind of laugh and mutter a little smiles and then do it. Um, but it really does make you aware of, of how closely connected we are on a daily basis every minute of the day. So um, I'm one of the first things I started thinking about when this happened was, you know, we're all, our, our, our routines have been shattered. Our, our daily routines and our, our daily lives have been completely turned upside down uh, and you know ironically for me it's, it doesn't seem very different because I'm sitting at my desk working most days anyway uh, and I'm going outside and taking long walks when I can uh, so if you already do work from home then that's then we kind of got this you know we, we're, we know what we're doing but for people who aren't used to staying home all day it's it's it can be really difficult and and, uh, and so I started thinking about the notion that even though this is a very stressful time and a very uncertain time, uh, it's, I think it's a really good practice for us to stay engaged in our creative hobbies and whether it's photography or whether it's something old, something else or something entirely new. Uh, we, number one, it keeps us more sane and more grounded because it keeps us away from the news and it keeps us, uh, once you start immersing yourself in your creativity, then that, yeah, that just takes your brain to a much more happy, healthy place uh, than, than the kind of stressful worry that, uh, that we're experiencing with our families and the people we're stuck in quarantine with or in self-isolation or whatever we're calling it. And, and so I've been, uh, I've been doing a lot of creative stuff. Uh, I've, uh, the funny thing is I haven't really picked up my camera in a couple weeks. I've been taking long walks, uh, two to three hour walks on the trails, uh, but I've been just out there mostly walking and thinking and sometimes talking on the phone. Uh, and so maybe that's my process is since I'm working and, and my regular daily life doesn't feel that much different, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do something different outside to, to allow myself to, to think about what's going on. Um, I have been baking bread, as Kate said. I've been, the real challenge is finding flour. Uh, That's true. I can't find any at any grocery store in Seattle right now. I haven't yeah, been we able did, to find flour in like two weeks. Yeah, we did a Fred Meyer run this morning and one bag of bread flour in the store and I grabbed. So and I have some, yeah. 
So I've been baking bread. I've been trying to play music and play guitar and uh, writing a coronavirus uh, related song that I hope to post at some point. Um, but I've, I, I did write a blog post and shoot a video about uh, encouraging people to stay creative. And I had some ideas that can help uh, alleviate the fact that the stuff that we like to photograph most of the time, you know, most of us are outdoor photographers. And so we tend to go out in the world and, and photograph places and people and activities and adventure and events. Uh, we can't really do that right now. So even though our, our usual photography subjects are sort of off limits, there's a lot of things we can do. And so uh, I'll just list a couple of things that I've come up with, uh, things that I've shot that are very close to home and, and different. And then I'll open it up and you guys can ask me questions and, and comments and uh, Kate can kind of, you know, Kate the Zoom mom can help kind of fill so <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the first thing that I came up with is, is is shooting very close to home. And there's, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was was flowers. I don't know if there's flowers blooming in Seattle, in Seattle area yet, uh, but maybe you guys are in other parts of the country. Yeah, we're uh, actually, we we're, we're missing, the UW Quad is filled with cherry blossom trees. And wow. they just bloomed like a week and a half ago and everybody's like, don't come to the quad. And I'm like, but it's the quad. Yeah. It's the cherry blossoms. It's amazing. But yeah. So, but yes, we do have flowers of blooming, tulips and things like that. Yeah. And so that's a great time to, is to shoot things that you've never shot before that you're not used to. And, and so flowers, <coughs> excuse me, flowers, uh, you know, macro shots, uh, but you know, just brilliant colors, you know, playing around with different uh, patterns and shapes and, uh, one of the things that I have done in the past is if I have flowers at in my garden at home, I'll take a white, uh, I, I use a white, a big soft box uh, on a light, but you could also use a pillowcase or hold a sheet behind, stretch a sheet behind a, a large plant. And then you shine a light or a flash behind that. So you're basically shining the light towards you that's coming through the back of the flower, but diffused by the sheet. And, and the uh that's the picture that was on the on the glazers um sign up page for that there was a picture of some orange flowers against a white background that was what i did there and so that's pretty cool because you have a high, very high shutter speed uh and you have a very high aperture because you have so much light from the flash and that allows you to get the entire plant uh, in sharp focus uh, and very crisply lit uh, backlit with that just solid white background and and I, I you could probably do that with any number of objects uh, but so shooting having a flash behind a, a diffuser and pointing straight at you with a subject in between you and the camera and so I've done that in the past uh, I was injured I cracked a rib one time and I couldn't go ride my bike and hike and so that's what I did around my garden for a couple of days uh, another th uh, thing that we're all stuck with or most of us are stuck with somebody uh, in the house. And so, and hopefully these, probably these people are somewhat important to you, <laughs> even though you're getting tired of them. And so portraits, you know, uh, any number of portrait ideas and capturing personalities. And uh, Chris Orwig was giving away his free book, People Pictures, a PDF file. And I think this is a really great book. It's, it's easy to follow and it's got lots of different exercises and ideas. And so people and portraits are a great, uh, a great thing to do. Uh, pet photography, if you're not so much into people, but you much prefer your pets, uh, which is totally understandable. Uh, this is a, a great time to take pictures of your pets. Uh, and even pets can be great action photography uh, subjects as well, because they don't always behave and they, you know, kind of scattered with their movements. And, and so, it, and it, you know, in addition to the exercise involved, if you get a great photo of your favorite pet or your favorite human pet, then it's actually a very fulfilling, uh, a very fulfilling thing to do. And it's going to be a meaningful thing to have happen, uh, especially knowing, you know, as we get out of this, knowing that this is what kind of fostered and inspired that picture. So, um, and let's see, what was the other, and a couple other examples I was thinking of. Um, the last two were, oh yes, still life, uh, 
you know, if you're like me, there's a lot of stuff in your house. And you know, I've got guitars, I've got aviation maps behind me on the other side of the wall. There's plenty of stuff to go photograph uh, with the macro lens and make still lifes. And, and that kind of brings up another idea. I was thinking about some words that, that kind of describe the kinds of photography we do. And one of them had to do with a lot of us photograph to kind of make sense of our world. You know, the world's a very chaotic place and there's a lot of stuff everywhere and it's very messy. And as photographers, we're always trying to distill our scenes down into very simple, workable, uh, very workable uh, you know, compositions that, that are uncluttered and that are very, very visually appealing. And I think from, from some standpoint, there's, a, there's definitely an aspect of, of controlling our world and making sense of the mess. Um, so I don't know if that's, if that's something you guys, um, I, I think a lot of nature photographers are that way as well. So, uh, so those are, those were the five ideas that I come up with. Oh, and the bird feeder was number five. Uh, um, the bird feeder is an amazing way to kill a few hours every day of your life. So, uh, I, if I, you visited, have one. Uh, I visited my dad a couple years ago and he had one and I had a great time watching and photographing. And of course my dad's, you know, obsessed with trying to keep the squirrels off the bird feeders. And, and so he had built this contraption and, and the squirrels, you know, keeps winning. So that keeps, <laughs> he does keep, yeah, that keeps him amused. So, well, and squirrels are pretty smart, actually. They know how to do things. Yeah. So. And this was like, I, you know, the, the bird feeder is on top of the pole. And so he got this aluminum tube around the pole. So there's really no way to climb the pole because it's too wide and too slippery and the squirrel still got up it somehow. <laughs> he came in the kitchen one day and looked out and there's the squirrel on the birch and it's like, no. So they're smart. So those were my five, yeah, those are my five ideas. And, and, uh, and so just, you know, we can kind of open it up to comments and questions and, uh, and it doesn't have to be about that. If you have any questions about photography or Fuji stuff, uh, feel free to throw it at me because this is, you know, your time to, uh, your time to get the information that you want or get whatever you want from me. Well, I would okay. just, like to, well, I, I'll just add real quick on like what you were talking about, like documenting the people that you're sharing your space with um, or documenting your pets or when you go out for a walk and you're taking photos and things like that. Um, I think that, um, you know, this is kind of a once in a lifetime experience that we're all going through right now. So documenting those moments and the people that we're with and the people that we encounter along the way, um, I think that we're going to have really, we're going to find a lot of value in that, you know, when we look back on things in a month or six months or a year. Um, so one of the things that I'm trying to incorporate is journaling and adding printed photos to my journals um, as I'm going through this experience, you know, so um, and I'm using actually Instax stuff for that. So printing out some of my shots and putting them in a book and kind of journaling about how I felt when I took that photo. And it might be from a walk around the block because I just need to get out of the house for a few minutes um, because I also work from home a lot. Um, but, you know, there's been like today I'm at Glazer's for the first time in a few weeks. So of course I have a camera with me and I'm taking photos of the environment because it looks very different than it normally does. So um, I think documenting these moments as best we can and, you know, writing about them or talking about them is, is going to be a really crucial way that we can help ourselves get through this too. I think that's a really good point uh, to add because, you know, I, I remember seeing last week, I saw a picture of Mumbai, India, one of the most crowded places on the planet and the streets were empty. Just dead. Yeah. And same, another picture of uh, like Islamabad, Pakistan, dead. Well, and that, you know, there's spots in Italy and you see downtown streets in London yeah. that have no one on them. And it's yeah, surreal. Yeah, it's, yeah, it it's, is it's, very, it is very surreal. This is a very yeah. surreal time in every single way. And so, so yeah, you'll never be able to take those kinds of pictures again. Think about all the times you've been trying to take that one picture and you're like, wait, they're in my shot. Wait, can you, and you're like, uh, <laughs> So this is your time to go get those pictures of, of downtown scenes with nobody in them. Within reason, be safe. Reason, We're not encouraging yes. you to go out and, and expose yourself to the virus. But, you know. We're talking about documenting this time. And another thing I thought about is, is since we are, uh, 
a lot of us, a lot of people are, are stuck at home with their kids, which they're enjoying. I have a friend of mine down the block. He's like, I, I hate to say this, but I'm getting paid to hang out with my daughter and go skiing all the time. So, um, and so I thought from a photography standpoint, you know, bring your kids into it, you know, and sit them on, sit them down with Photoshop and make fun pictures with them. Or, uh, I, last week I did a, I was, did a, uh, a blog post uh, about the new luminar sky augmented augmented sky feature where you can actually add things into the sky which it's a little silly at times but you know this is a not this is a very different time so maybe right uh yeah bring your kid up with you and and add funny things into the pictures or just create these wild composites or just bring them into the process somehow i know well, that and maybe Manita, taking walks with his son every day taking pictures well, and you might find your, your kid wants to take photos too. So you could maybe share tips and tricks on how they can learn photography. That's another, yeah. way, another way to get them involved and engaged for sure. Does anybody have any questions that they want to ask in the chat room or <clears throat> um, over a microphone and video? Does anybody have any questions? You guys are so shy. Did everybody get their coffee this morning? Yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> Bring it. Um, so another thing that I think is interesting to kind of document along the way, like you were talking about uh, baking bread, right? I know you've been baking a lot of bread. So um, another thing is, you know, photographing, you know, maybe you make a project out of photographing your food. Um, maybe instead of just when you make your dinner, you put it on the plate, you know, take a couple of minutes to make it look nice and take a photo. And maybe, you know, there's a photo essay that you can put together of your favorite dishes. Um, or if you're a baker, you know, I have a friend who runs a, uh, he's a photographer, but he loves to bake. And so when he bakes, he puts together like really nice images um, and he'll kind of document the process along the way, um, like a food blogger, but you know, just a regular person who just loves baking. Yeah, Mary, a lot of people are doing that around the country. Yeah, um, right. So uh, Mary's talking about um, yeah. taking photos of people that they meet along the way. Um, maintaining social distancing, of course. Um, and I've done that as well. Uh, the last time I went to Pike Place Market here in Seattle, I uh, took an Instax camera with me and um, photographed the produce vendors and gave them prints. So, you know, that's another way, you know, they're those uh, at the Pike Place Market, for instance, they're used to having thousands and thousands of people at their booths on a daily basis, especially on a weekend. And I was down there on a Saturday afternoon and I was the only customer. It was very, very surreal, very bizarre. Um, but I asked if I could take their photo and I took a couple of insects shots and I printed them and I was able to give it to them. And you know that was at least like a little thank you to them. Um, because I was able to like make an image and share it so quickly. So um, that's a lot of fun to be able to kind of give that back you can email files to people to um, tag them on social media, those kinds of things. Um, Cause they're, you know, the people like at the, at the fruit vendors in the markets, obviously at the hospitals and things like that. Those are the people that are really keeping us up and running in this really crazy time. So Whatever we can do to help them. <laughs> and, and talking about you know your food photography, uh, in addition to baking bread, I've just been finding since we have this time, we can devote ourselves to a craft uh, or a process with more dedication and an increased amount of you know instead of hurrying through it, oh, I got to hurry and make dinner. You know, I, I, there we have time to to. Uh, to do this on a really fun basis. So I was gonna share a picture uh, if I, let's see. Photos. So I had, I made fresh pasta last week. I have a, one of those pasta crank machines. And so this was my lunch yesterday and, and getting ready for my lunch. And so I, I've been enjoying uh, taking the time to, to prepare food and bake bread and make pizza. And then I'll whip out the phone and put it in portrait mode and, and try to capture a really fun picture. And so that's actually been my photography is, is, is portrait mode on the iPhone trying to stage and just make my meals look really appealing and, and just practicing there. 
So. Well, and the other, the other thing too, like I, when I was last at the local market, I bought bread from a, a local baker that's at Pike Place Market. And I took a photo of that bread. I took a nice photo of that bread and I put it on my Instagram stories. And then I tagged the, the company who makes it and just was like, Hey, if you're in Seattle, these guys are open. They have awesome bread and treats. Like, you know, if you're in the area and you need those things, like you can go here. Um, so that's another way to kind of like connect with com people um, locally, but through social distancing because it's online. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a time to do things that we're not normally doing because we are have this time to be slowed down. Exactly. And to, and to, and to kind of put our attention towards whatever we're doing in a much more slow and increased, you know, with increased focus. Um, thanks, Lisa. Does anybody else have any questions? We'll have a little bit more time, but um, please feel free to ask uh, if you have questions. So I have haven't been in, I haven't been comfortable asking people unknown to photograph them. Um, yeah, I mean, I think for Allison, Dan, if you don't mind me taking this, and then you can pipe in too yeah. with an answer. Um, I think asking people to photograph them is probably one of the most challenging things out there. Um, some people are really outgoing, um, but some of us are shy. I'm a little bit shy. Um, but I've found in my years of traveling and, and talking to people around the world that it got easier for me to talk to people and ask them if I can photograph them. And I think most people are going to be, most people are going to say, yeah, that's great. You're going to get people who are say, no, thank you. And that's okay. Um, but I, I didn't just jump into, hey, can I take your picture? Um, in this instance at Pike Place Market, I was having a conversation with them. How are things going for them? Um, you know, just trying to, to get a feel of what their experience is like right now, because I know they're used to so many people. And I was like the one person at that time. So it's like a weird dynamic. Um, but we had that conversation and then I got to know them a little bit. I asked their name. I asked them how long they'd worked with that vendor. The one woman I photographed, she's worked with them for 30 years, which I couldn't believe because she doesn't look like she could have worked anywhere for 30 years, but that's what she told me. And, um, but towards the end of the conversation, I just said, hey, I, you know, I'm a photographer. Could I take a quick portrait of you and I'll give you a copy of the print right here and now? And they were like, well, yeah, that would be cool. And uh, so I did, I took a couple and um, her name is Jody. And she has this awesome smile and I took a couple, I gave her a print right then and there. I took a couple of other photos of a couple of the other vendors at that same stand and also gave them prints. And they were like, how did you do that? Is that a Polaroid camera? I was like, no, it's an Instax camera. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but they, you know, they were excited about it and asking me, where can I get that camera? Which was an unintended side effect. But um, the joy for me was being able to have that conversation and being able to provide them um, with a little a little thank you for their time. So I, Dan, do you have um, other like tips for kind of engaging with people on the street that you might want to photograph? Uh, well, I think that that exactly what you said is rings really true. It's it's about engaging with people. A lot of times, photographers, whether we're shy or whether we're, you know, I hate to say it's kind of selfish with our pursuits, uh, or just we're not thinking about this. We'll go and try to capture this photo and get that and, and take this picture. And so maybe we'll see a great subject, we see a great looking person we want to photograph, a really appealing portrait. Uh, and we'll just go try to take that. Uh, but this is a person that's, and so I found that engaging with that person, like Kate said, engaging with them, talking about their experiences and asking them, uh, not only will you open them up uh, as a subject, you'll get to know them as well. And, and you may, end up find, learning something about them that can help you get a better portrait, which you can then share with them uh, with a little instant Instax picture or an email or something. But, you know, it's, it, it's a lot of times photography is a, a, a process from afar, especially with longer lenses. And getting in close and engaging with people uh, from six feet away or, or greater uh, is a really, it, it, it's, a, it's a good human thing to do. Uh, and I think right now we're all being reminded that that the the humanity of our situation is what needs to be preserved most. Uh, you know, I find myself 
I'm sure we all find ourselves somewhat frustrated at the grocery store sometimes, but when I did it today, it was, you know, everybody's extremely kind and, and like, oh, we're both in this aisle. Okay, we'll all go around and I'll come back, you know, the other way. And just these little things that we're all trying to be more courteous. And so I'm trying, trying to, just trying to be a more engaged photographer with our subject matter it makes a big difference. Um, so we have a couple of questions in the queue. One is from Carter and then we'll go to Hannah's question. Um, one is, could you talk about methods to make a macro lens with your other lenses? Reverse mounting, teleconverters, those kinds of things. Do you have any tips and tricks for that? Yeah, there's three ways that I've done that. Uh, aside from a macro lens, uh, there are, uh, I know Fuji has the, the little MCEX 11 and 16 extension tubes. And an extension tube basically just brings the lens farther out from your camera. So if you were able to hold the lens away from the camera, uh, then the magnification would work out to make it more of a macro lens. But since you can't really hold it steady, and plus there's all the light leaking in, an extension tube basically just holds it out there and blocks the light. So Fuji has two extension tubes. Uh, I think every manufacturer, a bunch of third-party manufacturers have those. Uh, and then uh, there was, we did a workshop and there was a time where we actually were taking the lens off and just tilting it a little bit on the body uh, and getting a macro lens, but also getting this, all this light flare. And it was just a highly creative, uh, fun activity. So it wasn't really, it sometimes worked and sometimes looked horribly. Um, and it was essentially doing the same thing. It was, it was somewhat creating a tilt shift lens and a, ma and a macro extension tube at the same time. But those extension tubes are the easiest, m least expensive way to do macro photography. I think that the Fuji ones are $100 uh, for, the, for one of those. And I just have the, the 11 size and it works great. So that's cool. Um, I see someone mentioned they were trying to take photos of produce at, at Fred Meyer and were asked to leave. So that could totally happen because the grocery stores are more private. Um, so if you're going to do that, try and be sneakier about it. <laughs> but ideally, you're not getting kicked out of places. Um, you know, traditionally, like in Seattle, we have a lot of public market weekends, like Ballard has a farmer's market every weekend, Fremont does. Those have also been shut down. So the ways that we might photograph uh, that fruits and vegetables and things like that um, aren't as readily available because a lot of these markets aren't open. Um, yeah. But if you have bought fruits and vegetables for yourself, you could photograph them at home like Dan did when he showed you that example earlier. So that would be, you know, think about your direction of light and maybe, you know, put it on a nice surface or a nice plate, um, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to just ask this, uh, we, we're about to wrap up here, but we do have a question and maybe this is for Victor and Jeff. Um, since they work for Fuji, they What is Jeff? Are, He's not in the thing. Well, there, it's only showing us a few people. I saw He's him sign here. in. I don't know if he's still here. I see his Hi, Jeff. people there. Um, so uh, someone's asking if the X-T4 will be released as scheduled. Um, are, are, are you guys able to talk about that at all? Um, I know there have been- to, to address that question. Uh, thanks, Anna, Hannah, for the question. You know, before this the whole world changed, <laughs> Uh, in the global market, uh, we were fairly confident we'd probably be shipping, you know, the original uh, ship date. Uh, but uh, nothing official has been communicated to us. I would anticipate it to be delayed uh, somewhat into May. But I would just say stay tuned. As soon as we know something, we'll definitely shoot it out to our, our dealers like Glaciers. And we're very excited to ship it as much as you're excited to, uh, to shoot with it. So look for, look for updates on the X-T4. As soon as we know, we will definitely communicate that out to our customers for sure. So, um, okay guys, it's, it's 1.30 here. I know this was short, um, but hopefully you enjoyed the time. Um, like I said before, we have more of these planned. So take a look at the workshops and events pages at glazerscamera.com for the full list of what we have programmed. Um, we're going to keep adding these in April and we'll plan for probably some in May as well. If you have ideas for these, please feel free to email me at kateh at glazerscamera.com as well. So we want to hear from you. What would you like to see us do? 
um, and that kind of thing. So uh, thanks for your time. I'm glad to see you guys were able to tune in and that you got some uh, ideas and uh, tips for today. And um, we will see you on the next one. So thanks, thanks for, and have a great for day. Everyone. Thank you, Dan, for being here. We really appreciate your time. Yeah, it's okay. my pleasure. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thank remember, you. Remember, don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. Or anyone else. <laughs> don't do that. Okay. Stay safe. Thanks again.